All right, oh, let yeah. me get my little notes out, and we're going to see if you can survive this podcast. <laughs> I love it. All right, here we go. For this scenario, you are a survivor in a post-apocalyptic United States. You are low on supplies, and you're starting to feel the effects of hunger and dehydration. Now, by the way, before the first question, there's always room for wiggle room. If you push back on an answer, that's the fun part is we can kind of explain to the audience your thought process. Okay. okay. All right. So you're low on supplies. You're starting to feel the effects of hunger and dehydration. Do you A, look for a water source such as a river or stream or B, look for edible plants or berries to eat? All of the above. In route to the water source, I'm going to be looking for something to eat. <laughs> Perfect answer. Yeah, you know, you got to gotta be doing both. Um, yeah, survival situations, man. You better be multitasking, uh, conserving energy. It's all about calories in versus calories out. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so you're on your way. You're looking for a, a source uh, of water. Um, you're foraging whatever you can along the way. You decide to look for a water source and you come across a pond. Do you A, take a sip from the pond to rehydrate or B, filter the water? If you have means to filter, it's definitely worth that while. Pond, stagnant water, giardia, other protozoans, you know, the last thing you want to do is drink something that's going to make it worse. Fuck yeah. B, filter the water. Um, I'll just, this is, I'm, I'm not paid by any advertisers, but I will say when I went to the rainforest in April, I brought a water bottle called a grail geopress. Yeah. The yeah. geopress, supposedly you can scoop water from any source at all and you yeah. press the sort of yep. bottle down through the water and it filters it. So, yeah. No, I think those things are awesome. Uh, a couple of guys on this last hunt had them, and I had seen them before. Um, in, in my head, what I, I use a, um, um, a a bladder gravity feed. Um, I'm trying to think. Katadyne, I think, makes it. Uh -huh. um, and it's like five liters, so I can scoop it up. So let's say you're base camp, right? Like, and it, and it just hangs, and as it the gravity runs it through the actual filter part, so, you yep. know, you've got it hanging there. It's ready for, um, you know, putting in your stove or you can drink right out of it or you can put it in your pack and drink through it just like a uh, water bladder. Yeah. Um, so to me, I, I'm still using that, even though I've, I, I most likely before my next overnight in the woods adventure, I will have one of those presses. Right? Yeah, the, the um, press, I, I loved having yeah. that thing. Yeah, like I was just looking at it. I was like, hmm, every time I want to filter, I've got to pull this thing out, right? And I'm looking at my buddies over there. They've got theirs just clipped like a Nalgene bottle. Yep. And I was like, hmm, that's convenient. So yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's had. probably one of those things on my list to, to have. And I do recommend if you pick up a GeoPress, the newer model has like little nice hand grips to press down yeah. on. The older yeah. model didn't have that. Okay. So some people in our that. group, when they pressed on their old model, it kind of fucking hurts your hands a little bit. You want the nice, oh, really? you want the nice handles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't recommend the one that's like a straw where you suck through it. Cause then you got to uh -huh. suck your water through the filter and you're like using energy just to get right. the water through the filter. Right. Yeah. So. I had one of those inline filters, like you're saying, like it was the straw type or whatever. You put it in the actual, you know, in the tube between you and your camelback or whatever bladder um, when I was doing ultras. And it required a little bit of pulling on it, but not a lot. But I've seen the ones you're talking about where it's like you're exhausted from just pulling a little bit of yeah. water out of your. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point, too, for sure. Okay. So you filter the water. And you get a little drink, and then you continue on your journey. You come across an abandoned gas station. Do you A, loot the gas station for supplies, or B, avoid the gas station and continue on your way? Hmm. I would put eyes on said gas station for a certain amount of time 
to where I'm at least confident there's no um, zombies or whatever the hell's in there <laughs> waiting for me. It's always zombies at the end of the world, right? Yeah. Um, but no, put eyes on it. Uh, and, and if you're confident, hey, man, and, and it looks like there to be stuff worthwhile in that gas station, that's that's probably what I'm going to do. But situation is going to dictate. If there's lots of traffic, it's clear that someone else has gained ownership of that. Hey, man. You know, it's according how apocalyptic are we eating each other yet? You know what I mean? Um, Could be. Are we are we working together? Are we fighting each other? Like what was the um, the zombie flick with the crossbow? Um, what was that movie or that uh, series with Carl? Yeah, Carl why the kid. Do, why am I not remembering the name of that? But it's super popular. Yeah. yeah, we watched a couple seasons of it, and then Melissa was like, "This is stupid," so we stopped watching it. Um, but yeah, you know, if we're not, if I'm not worried about, you know, having to fight for whatever's in there, then yeah, man, free food's free food, right? Like, um, what Zombieland, man? You gotta, you gotta find your Twinkies. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you do your little recce, you do a little reconnaissance, you get eyes yeah. on, you feel it out, because it's fu- it is fucking dangerous post-apocalypse. I'm just yeah. gonna add that detail. Yep. So yeah. you do your recce, you get your eyes on, and then you loot. Then you loot it. Then you get your, you're getting your supplies. Okay, so you're in there, and as you're in there searching, a group of hostiles approaches. So do you, A, hide in the bathroom, or B, subtly find a little improvised weapon? (laughs) Uh, Bathroom sounds like no way out, right? That's bad. Now you're cornered. Um, You probably should have already had an improvised weapon before going in there anyway at least a walking stick right what's the first thing dudes do when they go in the woods get a stick sharpen it right start carving on it you know um so yeah you should probably because you're in this bad situation anyway already acquired or made some type of weapon but yeah so you've let's say i left it outside because i'm tired in my recce spot and now i'm in this gas station um yeah man probably looking for a weapon how many of them are there you know, or does it look like somebody because fighting's bad, you know, like in this situation, you know, survival, you get cut or a broken arm from a or a broken hand from a fight. Um, and if it's a group of people, man, you're you're already screwed, right? Two on one, you gotta be a bad mofo to beat up two dudes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh if it's a group of people, man, You know, you need to break contact, avoid contact for sure. Um, So find that weapon and simultaneously look for a way out. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. So B is correct. You you subtly find the makeshift shift weapon. And I like that break contact because you don't know if something happens, how easy is it going to be to get medical aid? Right. You know, the world's fucked up. So you want to avoid the conflict if you can. Yep. Run. R- Zombie land rule number one. Maintain your cardio, bro. You got to be able to run them. <laughs> Maintain your cardio. Exactly. Okay. So you grab a broken broom handle from the mop bucket nearby. You grab it in case you need it. You're getting ready to move out and break contact. Three hostiles are now approaching you inside the gas station before you have a chance to get out of the building, before you get out of the gas station. So do you A, fight the hostiles, or B, negotiate? Well, if you're, you're hearing my dogs get spun up. Melissa just got home. <laughs> Mama's home. So the next, our next couple of minutes are going to be a lot like this. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll go quick. We'll go quick. Yeah. I'll let let her get in here and tell her that we're still on and uh she'll you know what? They all just ran outside. I'm gonna shut them up. Yeah. Okay. So we have five dogs. Um amazing. And they're all one of them's my fault, the other four are Melissa's fault, rescues. Um, so anyway, we have a pack of dogs. A, a friend to all. Yeah. So um, you know what? I always, you know, the the ruse, right? You know, if somebody's Hey, give me your wallet and they've got a knife and you know, I've got my gun on me, right? You're probably gonna give them my wallet, <laughs> you know, but I might also follow it up. So, you know, situation dependent, these three folks, 
you know, is it clear to me they have no interest in um, teaming up, right? This might be a potential opportunity to join a community. And in a survival situation, it's a lot easier to survive with three and four people and divide, um, you know, the work up. So, you know, it's kind of like, okay, if um, the if if I'm not certain that they want to just take my stuff and kill me or worse, then, you know what, maybe we talk a little bit. It might be an opportunity to make friends, right? Because right now, so far in, in our, our, our trip, um, I'm by myself. And it's just like, um, what was that movie with Tom Hanks where he befriends the volleyball? Oh, right? yeah. Cat, That's uh, what happens. Story. Yeah, right. He's talking about Wilson. Yeah, it was Wilson, yeah. the volleyball. Yeah. Um, you know, at what point do you start talking to pine cones? <laughs> you know, so I would say, man, in that case, I'm going to kind of assess these these three individuals, these three folks, and and you know, what are their objectives? Um, you know, is it one dude and, and and two females, and they clearly need help? Well, like I said, that's an opportunity. Is it, you know, oh, The Walking Dead? That's the name of that movie or yeah. or series. You know, is it, you know, is it? Three of the badasses from Walking Dead, you know, dude's got a baseball bat with some wire on it. And the other dude's got a sledgehammer, you know, and the other dude's got a samurai sword and they're covered in blood. Hey, man, we're going straight to sticking them dudes in the face with, with my um, um, broken broom handle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Get, great answer. <laughs> so for, for this one, they don't seem super aggressive. So so you negotiate. B, you, you negotiate. Um, and they're not really looking to be friends, but it works out because you all kind of divvy up the supplies. They get some, you get some, everybody kind of wins. Cool. So you can move on from that, but you only have enough supplies for like a day or two based on what you got to keep. Oops. So you continue on your journey. You're looking for more for supplies and you're moving on. And you come across a river with a very strong current. Do you A, attempt to swim across, or B, look for a bridge or another way around? Hmm. Well, um, you know, one question I'm going to be, you know, water temp, air temp. Um, I'm a fairly good swimmer. I was on a dive team. Um, I have a decent ability of, you know, of, uh, and training for you know, determining whether or not I could cross that river right then and there. Um, so if I could cross it, you know, and wind up even getting, you know, having to swim with the current a little bit to cross, and, but I don't have to worry about hypothermia, maybe I go ahead and swim it. If hypothermia and or the river's just so fast, um, well, I'm going to look for a ford, a bridge, something else. Because, um, yeah, man, it's six to eight inches of fast moving water um is dangerous very dangerous and to 12 inches of fast moving water well that's a swift water river crossing and it's i mean it's dangerous so you know a survival situation man you got to play it safe you can't get hurt you know you slip fall break a leg uh, sprain an ankle you know um get a bad cut now it's infected right so you got to play it safe man yeah smart so perfect you look for another way around and you find a fallen tree and you cross across a fallen tree. And after you successfully cross, you're feeling pain in your foot. So do you a take off your shoe and examine the foot or B keep the shoe on massage the foot a little and then keep moving. Um, Hmm. I reckon it would just be, you know, uh, related to the pain. Like, did, did it just came out of nowhere? Like, or did I trip, fall? You know, it should be some indications of mechanism of injury and the injury itself. Um, if I'm like, ah, it's just a, uh, you know, a sprain, maybe we just move on. Um, you know, what's behind me? Or is anybody chasing me? You know, I got a lot of questions. <laughs> I, need, I need more context to answer <laughs> this question. As simple as it is, you know, do you stop and take your shoe off? Um, if all's well and good, man, probably take stop. Um, maybe if the water's cool, where you can go back to the creek and soak it in some cool water uh, to help with inflammation. Uh, elevate it, maybe take a rest. 
so yeah, I mean, without a little more context, man, um, I would say, you know, heck, as long as, you know, you're not in imminent danger, you don't think it's broken or sticking through the skin or something like that. I mean, probably just, you know, massage it, move on. Okay. So you discover that there's a deep cut on the bottom of your foot and it's bleeding. So do you A, clean the wound and wrap it in cloth or B, tie your shoes tighter and keep moving? <laughs> so like, like I said, a few minutes ago while we were talking, Melissa has come home. So now she's listening to this. So you might be able to hear her giggling in the background. Um, <laughs> you know, no, because <laughs> I think what I'm getting from her is she's like, this knuckle dragger would just tighten his shoe and move on. Rub some dirt in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can hear what she said, but she's like, you probably just rub some dirt in it and move on. Um, no, we need to clean that sucker, wrap it up with whatever the most sterile stuff we have. If we have the ability, to, you know, the, our cloth, if we have the ability to put it in boiled water and, and try to, um, um, you know, make it clean and sterile or as sterile as, par, par, as possible, then we want to do all that stuff. Um, yeah, probably rubbing dirt in it and just tightening up your boot is the wrong answer. <laughs> Excellent answer. I'm I'm glad Melissa was here to help you with that. <laughs> I think she I think she her her guidance has helped you because a you correct you clean the wound you wrap it with cloth, and now we're getting to the last question. Um, the injury has slowed down. But now the three hostiles from the gas station are closing in on your six. And they are hostile. So do you A, strike first with the broken broom handle you took from the gas station, or B, negotiate again? Mm, I wish there was a C, evade. Um, it, if it's clear... And if it's clear to me, like, hey, they they are not interested in in letting me talk my way out of it, uh, any compromise, give them my Snickers bars that I took from the gas station. They're, they're not into that. They want to hurt me. Um, I'm probably going to start figuring out a way to ambush them um, and pick them off best I can. You know, three on one, straight up fight in the middle of the woods, you know, whatever weapons they got. If even if they had none and all I got is a broomstick, that's not a good fight, man. Um so, yeah, I'm I'm probably going to try to double back on them, freaking set up my own little ambush. If they're tracking me, then, you know, there's obviously ways to set your footprints into place where they walk right into your ambush, something like that. Um, and probably hit one of them hard as I can with that, you know, stick them with that broken broom handle and haul ass and then do it all over again. And hopefully after you, you know, maim or injure the second one as a party, they give up. They're like, okay, this dude's not easy, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're this dude's not coming along easy, pretty good. Yeah. So let's just leave that guy alone. That's that would be my intent, you know. Yeah, great answer. And I like I like that you added C evade. Yeah. Um, for the audience listening, who's probably just the average civilian, you want to get out of there and avoid the potential of being injured or damaged in any way. Right. Um, but yeah, great, great answer as well as kind of setting up your own way so that they got to come to your game and For you're going to, sure. you're going you're gonna to bash one of them. You're going to run, you're going to get the second one. And then hopefully by then the third guy is like, all right, I'm, I'm out. I'm That's not right. playing this game with this guy. I, we picked right. the wrong guy. That's right. Let's go find some lower hanging fruit somewhere else. You know, That's, exactly. Yeah. You know, that's, there's, there's so much more to like, warfare man and like i think too often the average person thinks we're all just a bunch of meatheads that want to fight um nah man freaking i'm a i i mean i i i feel like you know not only does god love me um and that's why i still have all my fingers and toes um but you got to play it smart you know what i mean you can't i'm not jumping in the ring with mike tyson bro <laughs> you know what i mean um I don't want to wrestle or, or roll around in the, in the octagon with Chuck Lydell. You know, and I'm not dumb, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pick my fights um, a little smarter. So and I just got, the, I just got the side eye. <laughs> <laughs> From, um, uh, you know, uh, I try to pick my fights a little smarter. 
you she know would probably argue. She would, should probably argue that I should never fight with her. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I don't want to interrupt. <laughs> for this, for this survival scenario, God does love you. Your plan worked. And <laughs> after you knock out the one guy, the other two flee. And you even get to take some extra gas station supplies off the first guy. Wait, heck yeah. And so you get some, <laughs> you got some extra Snickers and some extra yeah. Twinkies. Some congratulations. Some licky chewies. Yeah, you, licky you have chewies. survived the podcast. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, brother. I, I really appreciate this opportunity, you know, um, to be able to talk about all the stuff that we have. Uh, you know, my my story and whatever it is, my journey, uh, especially with the Ivy game, the mental health, the physical health, the spiritual health, that whole package, being able to talk about that with you and then ultimately um you know the viewers if this if, if my message reaches one person just one you know and it affects them in a positive light then you know it's worth it it's worth every bit of it we we owe it to each other and i don't mean veterans i mean human beings it has gotten so easy to be mean to each other you know i can go online right now and pull up some account that i don't know some young lady, you know, who's trying to post about something nice and I can just be mean to her if I want to. And people do it all the time. It's, it's like we are OK with abusing each other just because we don't know each other and we wouldn't do it on the street. We wouldn't do it in a coffee shop. We wouldn't do it in Walmart. We'll do it on social media. And it's just it's horrible what we're doing to each other. Um, you know, the powers that be are separating us, uh, dividing us. Um, it's it's horrible. We're we're in a bad place, I think, overall uh, for humankind right now. I, I think technology has advanced well beyond our evolutionary capabilities, right? Like we haven't caught up. We exceeded our own abilities uh, when it comes to technology uh, of just being able to process all this stuff and, and absorb. It. And yeah. it's it's led to so much negativity. Um, I mean, I've been there. I've I've had little drama disputes uh, on social media and it's nothing is gained from it. Nothing. Um, so anyway, like I said, we, we need this, we need this talk man. we need, we need to talk about being nice to each other. You know, yeah, uh, that, that old saying, like you got nothing nice to say, don't say a damn thing. You know, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, we, we could stand some of that right now. Yeah. So. Well, th thank you so much for coming on sharing your story i i couldn't agree more like if, if we can help one person from hearing your story like fuck yeah mission accomplished um yeah. so yeah to the people out there you know there's hope there's community there's good food there's yeah. natural medicines um yeah and is there anything else um uh, where people can find you like the reason outdoors.org um, yeah um yeah so uh you know obviously right now the reason outdoors is kind of my passion and focus uh so the reason outdoors.org is the website um you know i'll, I'll I, you know it's funny brother i when i was running for congress i hated asking for money i hated it, it i hated everything about it at fundraising it was the worst part with the reason i'm asking folks for donations to do something awesome for people so i don't i'm not gonna feel bad about it at all so if while you're over on the reason outdoors and you think that's a cool thing um, hit the donate button. Um, we've got apparel and that sort of thing. So, you know, if you want to buy a hat or t-shirt, pardon me or something like that, or a chance at winning that Hoyt bow, it's all over on the website. Um, my company is capable incorporated.com. That's where you can find like all the different courses and stuff that we teach the shooting stuff and all that sort of thing. Um, and right now that's mostly what I got going on. <laughs> <laughs> those two things amazing, I'm, I'm finally amazing. i'm finally down to only two things going on <laughs> amazing amazing Th yeah. thanks again for coming on yeah. and uh thanks for listening everybody bye yeah for more of tony cowden's story make sure to check out part one of our interview for more of his military background and his history and be sure to definitely check out part two where tony shares his story of working with ibogaine and 5-MEO-DMT.